Okay, today we're going to transform this bathroom. Right now it has a marble um, walls and a shower base. We're going to uh, turn it into a Delta 400 Classic uh, bathtub shower combo. And uh, you'll be able to see the before and after. And this is the way the project looks as I'm coming into it. Just got here a couple minutes ago and we'll continue. Okay, once you've taken out the old unit, it looked like this. You know, you only get it all cleaned up, get up and a level on it in both directions. And uh, make sure the ground's totally level. If it's not level, which I don't know this one is, I'm going to go. Anyway, anyway, once you've got it taken, all this old one taken out, it'll look like this. Uh, I don't can't really get into the window area because it blocks the light, but it looked like that. And uh, you want to just double check that your all your other fits dry fit everything. Put your tub in, dry fit it, see how it goes. Put your walls in, dry fit them, see how they goes, and get everything set up exactly where you want it. If you got to notch it out for the window. So be it. If you don't have a window, then it goes right in. Just got to notch out the drywall, for example, if it needs to go a little higher, you know, or a little wider, you just cut out a little bit then. So everything is dry fit and in there perfectly. You have backing. You know, the important thing is that backing to where your uh, you know, edge is going to go. There's a little edge around the entire perimeter. You want to make sure you got backing there. You don't need backing up on here. You've got every so often when there's a stud, you throw a screw into those. But you need full backing on the edges. Okay, so this edge and this edge here. You need full backing there, but all the way around you don't need full backing. You just use the studs that are there and you nail to them, okay? All right, so anyway, that's the next step. We'll go ahead and dry fit the tub and see how it goes. Okay, when you're getting ready to dry fit the tub, I already checked the level and it's at a level on, on doing both directions. It's all coming toward, towards this direction. So anyway, I know the level has got to be changed in some way. I'll, we'll do that in a minute. But then I go to dry fit the tub, and I put in paper. Uh, just, you know, some hard paper, like craft paper or old paper bag, whatever. Whatever you got that you can write on um, without it breaking. And then you can get dimensions. Once you set the dry fit tub in there, you can go through the holes and mark down where it lines up at. Then you can get accurate dimensions from the wood. When you go to uh, preset your plumbing... That way it'll line up exactly when you go to make your tub. And I'll go ahead and show you that in a bit. Okay, on my, okay, on mine, you can see that uh, it's on top of the tile. Okay, so it doesn't go there. I got to cut the tile out. So we dry fit, and you can see there. So you would uh, make a mark um, on through the paper on both sides, so you can see where your holes are going to line up. And you go ahead and mark the top of the flange while you're here. You can see I marked the top of the flange right there. So you can see everything's going to go once you pull this thing out of here. You don't want to put you putting it in and out 15 times. So just pull it out of there, one, uh, put it in once, do all the measurement you need. So the flange is marked, the holes are marked through the paper, so I'll know approximately where they go according to the flange, how high they are. And we'll go through the whole thing. So anyway, I can't really mark anything on this side because it's sitting up on top of tile. Once I get the tile cut out of there, we'll double check one more time because the tile throws us an extra bit of work. Once I get the tile out, then I got to dry fit it one more time. But anyway, then we'll get double check all the marks and it'll be fine and we'll go from there. Okay, going off the paper here, I have, I marked down 12 inches, see right there, over to the point. So that's the center point of my hole. I have it squared off of uh, the framing and I'll take, like I say, as you can see, I got a picture of that. So I know where to put the square next time to when I get my plumbing lined up. I'll know exactly where this thing goes, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and mark it on my square also, but I do have a dimension here just in case. Okay, but I'll put a little dot right there on the square where the dot, other dot is, and I'll know that when I set this thing up like that, that'll be the center line of the hole for the tub. Okay? All right, that's the way it goes. Okay, let's go ahead and walk you through this if I can. I'm going to do this with one hand here. But uh, anyway... When you, a lot of people are having problems with these, they're saying that there's problems, and there's not really. They just think there are. Um, so it's all it's all the installer. It's not the equipment. Uh, for whatever reason, let's take you over here real quick. They're saying that this, when you have this black piece of plastic stuck onto the bottom of this thing, it becomes two separate pieces. You can see the white piece there underneath, which is the white from the tub. 
and so the shoes have a piece and they're not glued together or nothing and so it's somehow a problem it's not it doesn't do anything they're stable enough let me see if i can touch it with a they're stable there's nothing there it moves a flex of the hair who cares it doesn't mean anything we have threads to work with here so if there's an issue with it it's you it's not the equipment this thing's built awesome man i mean it's the best piece of equipment this thing here is just an engineering marvel okay and follow the directions you just can't get it wrong so anyway, as far as this is concerned this is going to hook up just like a normal bathtub any bathtub you've ever done in your life if you haven't this is normal Okay, just had not have two pieces. So what if there are two pieces? Who cares? There are ten pieces. The point is there's only two, and they clamp together fine with the clamp of the tool. So as you come back over here, we can see this is normal here. This is just the uh, uh, black for uh, Schedule 40 black ABS um, unit that's going to go in that tub. And uh, I got it at Home Depot for 25 bucks or something, whatever, not very much. And it has nice chrome pieces that go on the outside of it. And uh, so anyway, you take, you dissect this thing, um, dissect this thing, take it, they unscrew it, don't leave it together. Maybe that's people's problem. They just screw this in and think that's supposed to do it somehow. It don't. What you do is you take this, you're going to put this on that. That goes there, and that goes to the black part. That goes underneath the tub and right to the black part. Then this is going to go through the top of the tub, okay, and it goes right into it. You're going to use, they want you to use... DAP 3.0, that's a fine product. I mean, it's eight bucks a tube, so who cares? It lasts forever, it does a good job. Um, you take that, you put that around the uh, edge right here. It's hard to do this with one hand, but anyway, put it on there like putty and uh, slip it on. Once you slip it through there uh, and you screw it on, I can't really do it now, but when you screw it on there and you seat it, then you use the proper tool, which is a tool like this. You stick it in there and you screw it tight, okay, tight. And that seals it. Then once the uh, DAP 3.0 is dry, then uh, that's it. Uh, once the DAP 3.0 is locked in. The DAP 3.0, uh, if I, I wish I could do this with one hand, the DAP 3.0 is going to seal this thing to the tub. This, the, uh, you just screwed it in tight. It can't go nowhere. When water runs over, water runs over the tub, it runs up and over this lip. And down into this hole and goes down and, and it follows the tube and goes away it never leaks between there's no leaking between the people who are complaining about this just don't know what they're doing so anyway that's the system got it it's real simple dissect this thing take it apart take it out of there uh take this part put the dap 3.0 on it and uh i'll show you how to do that in a minute a little bit but anyway uh put it on there use the tool to properly uh, uh screw it in tight and once it's screwed in tight and lit and allowed to dry, that's there for a life. You will have to cut that out with a sawzall to get it out. It's never going to leak. It's never going to go anywhere. If it leaks, it's you. Didn't do what I just told you to do. This rubber piece goes on the bottom, goes underneath the black thing. So this goes underneath the tub. This thing, and then, so when you're looking down through the tub and from inside the tub, you're going to look down, you're going to see just the white of the tub. You won't see this black thing. It'll just be hidden there. And then you're going to stick this down through it and screw it on tight, tighten it up, and you're done. Okay? I think I've beat that dead horse uh, to the max now. If there are any questions, put them down below. But this is a real easy, simple system. It works perfectly. If it doesn't work, it's you. So make it work. Okay? Okay, this arm here, the big long arm you're seeing. Which again, I wish I could hold it and show you. But this arm right here. It needs to be replaced. It's too short, the one that comes in the package, by an inch and a half. So make it an inch and a half longer. Uh, dry fit it and double check it, like I just did. And you'll know it's perfect. So make it an inch and a half longer, just a regular piece of inch and a half ABS. Just replace the piece they give you, and you're back in business. Everything else works fine. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the seal is tight. Uh, it goes right up against the black thing. It's all tightened down with the tool, which is correct. All sitting real pretty. You got it all dry fit first and then went ahead and put it together and uh, ready to rock and roll. So it works perfectly. Like I said, to make an inch and a half longer for this big piece here, it's just regular inch and a half ABS. Replace the other inch and a half ABS they had there. It's just too short. Inch and a half longer is perfect. Works out perfect. And again, if, if there's a top seal. And if we go to the other side, uh, I don't know if you can see here, but 
anyway, it's just a perfect seal. There's a DAP 3.0 in there. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's a seal. It is DAP 3.0 in there, but what does it really matter? I mean, water rushes over that right into the tube and goes down. There's no way it can leak. It's impossible to leak. So anyone who has a problem with it, it's the person, not the, not the equipment. Okay? Perfect. Okay, when you go to put your uh, tub in, if your floor is not level, you got to level it. Uh, you see these two legs here? I can hold this with one hand. There's two legs, uh, one right here and one right here. Okay, you clearly see them when you buy it and have it in front of you. There's two legs, they're about an inch and a half uh, thick this way, an inch and a half this way, and they're about you know 10 inches apart, whatever. Those two things have got to be absolutely uh, solid ground, okay? they got to be on solid ground. Here, you can't put shims on them. You can't do anything like that. They have to be solidly touching the ground all the way up, point A to point B. They end right here. They actually blend right into the, right into the base right there. So they go all the way up, and they go all the way down. You can see how thick they are at the bottom, which uh, gives it a nice flow uh, to drain the water towards the hole. So anyway, bitchin' design, totally awesome. And, uh, but they have to be sitting on solid ground. So, you know, the number of ways to do it, uh, after all these years, I've decided shimming was the best, as long as it's solid shimming, to get to be absolute level. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. But that's the point. You want those two things right there to be sitting on solid ground. This other parts, you know, here don't matter. They're, they're down deep. They're, they're recessed and it don't matter. But those two legs have got to be absolutely on solid ground. The rest of it is designed as a honeycomb to support it. Okay, so if you get those things solid, the rest will be solid. That's the point. Now when you come into here, you can see that I've got solid shims on the ground. And that line is, uh, that line in here is 10 inches in. And uh, i got 13 inches till the drain starts. You can actually see the drain there, so that don't matter. But right there, from there to the drain, all the way back to where it ends at 36 inches, of, uh, 36 inches long and 10 inches from this edge because this one here is already perfectly level. All right, this one's sitting on solid ground. I checked the level this way, it was all level. Then I checked it this direction and it was off about an eighth of an inch. So I put the uh, shims in an eighth inch, I cut them at an eighth inch thick. So there's regular shims. I just cut them down to the eighth inch mark. So they're eighth inch thick all the way across and then uh, stapled them all in super tight. And now that, uh, that leg, that second leg, the one leg will be sitting right here on solid ground. And the next leg will be sitting right there on solid shimming. Okay? So that's how you do it. It'll be absolutely perfect. That way you get a nice level tub. Okay, what we have here is the perfect installation job for the plumbing. You want to follow that direction if you can get to that point. Okay, I just went down from, it was, it was two inches instead of for a shower before, so I dropped two inches and a uh, half with an adapter right there. Went over to a trap and brought it back up. And remember, we had already dry fit this, so we knew exactly how it felt. You know, how it went onto the tub. So we knew that, and then we remember we marked that out. Okay, we had center line that. So that's center line with that line, and then center lined with that line. So you can see the two lines line up perfectly. And so now we know when we put the tub back on, uh, remember we put the whole, uh, marks on the paper, that was the marks we had. Okay, and that lined up exactly perfectly. So when we go to put the tub in, it'll be absolutely dead nuts. Everything will line up perfect all the way to there. And uh, this is perfect. So, like I said, everything's going to just go according to plan. So we just love when a plan comes together. Again, when you put this one in, when you put this thing in, you just got to slip it on there. I never glue it. Once it's in place, it doesn't fall out or anything, you know. It's really just set to make this thing more stable. It has this little block of foam in there it comes with. Uh, leave that in there. It makes it more solid. But then you put this thing on too. It just, it just solidifies it a little bit. If I can get to it here. You can see it just, it just makes it a little more solid. Uh, so anyway, go ahead and slip it on there and just put it in there just like that. Okay. And uh, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay, so when I dry fit this uh, tub in here, I notice that that's where the uh, leg goes. Um, right through here, right through here. And so I put in a board, a backer board. The original studs weren't going to do it. So I just put in a new board all the way up, and that'll take care of my um, edge. You can see that cut out right there in the purple. 
that's where the piece is going to go. It's going to go right to there and to that down. So that worked out perfectly. It'll be a nice nailer. And then I'll fill the rest of that in with drywall mud and stuff uh, when we're all finished. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But anyway, so occasionally you might have to put in a piece of wood to have solid backing for your nailer. Okay? And again, you don't need nothing up here. Just wherever it touches. So it'll touch there to the left. It'll go over here to the right and touch over the end. That'll be plenty for the top. Okay? Now when you come to this side here, <coughs> one side or the other you have to leave open to where you can slide the edge on a corner. Okay, so in other words, your, your, your tub square and it needs to have room to move in. So it's going to be able to move in right here along this edge. When I put it in at an angle, it'll slide and bend right along this edge here then flip back out and be open. So uh, I need, actually need a stud right here because this stud's too far over for my backer. But I don't want to put it in first. I'll put it in after I get the tub in. Because if I put it in first, I won't be able to slide the tub in. Okay? So it's no big deal. I'll show you how to do it. So you've got to leave that open so you can slide it in, though. And I can't really show you how to do it because i only got one hand. So <coughs> that's it. I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm going to walk in here with the tub. I'm going to stick this side in first at an angle. It'll look like this. <laughs> just like my camera is. Whoop. I'm going to stick it in, boop, like that, and then drop it down into this side over here. And it'll slide right along that stud right there to the left of that, st stud, that stud right there. It'll slide right along here, that corner part. Okay, then it'll pop out when I get it laid out flat. Okay? So anyway, I uh, hope that helps. And if there's any more questions, let me know. But I, that's about all I can do. I can't really show you how to put it in because I have nobody else taking a picture. Again, that's the way it looks. And uh, that's what it's going to look for you uh, when you're all set up here. And then I take the uh, um, thing and just put on stainless putty. Uh, just like regular plumber's putty. Just called stainless. And uh, for marble and stuff. But anyway, it works great for this too. And uh, just slip it right on there. Again, if you use the tool, it's perfect. But I'll show you that in a second. But that's the way you put it on. Just make a little bead around the thing on the base there. And slip it in there. Screw it on. Tighten it up. And I'll show you what to do. Yeah, so anyway, after your uh, thing's set up, um, get it get it set to where your flange will meet. Um, going down, and then I uh, just put on another piece. Whatever you need to put in, you know. Uh, I really only need it uh, for this, you know, for the flange. That's where the flange lines up. You see right there, the bottom. Can't go any further because there's something in the way here, but I'll do that in a few minutes. But anyway, the flange is right there. You can see at the bottom as it goes down. It's touching so the new flange for the side wall will go right there. You're all set. Okay, as you can see here, when the walls are unsquared and stuff, they're not level and things like that, you got to just do what you got to do. I put a block behind there in the far back, you can see. Then I put a piece of shim across the top. Uh, that gives me the right connection when you put them together, then it's all nice and solid. When you're doing framing, you just got to simply do it. You look at it, see what it needs, and then handle it. Here I had to bring it out. On this thing here, I had to bring it out about three-eighths of an inch. I don't know if you can see in there, there's a shim. So it's, again, it's almost touching the outside of the drywall even. Um, it'll still work fine. But you got to do what you got to do when the walls are at a level and out of whack. Okay, so you can see, like I said, I put a block behind the back there. Then I put a shim onto it. Came all the way over to the next stud with the shim. It goes from 3 8 inch to 0, which works out perfect, because this side was already perfect over here. So anyway, that worked out good, 3 8 to 0, and uh, you got to do what you got to do. Okay, just make everything right, make all the corners right, make everything square, and then it'll turn out perfect. Okay, now you can see how absolutely gorgeous that turned out. I mean, the, the line is perfect on top. Uh, the reveal is the same all the way down. It's absolutely perfect. Everything lines up. Dead nuts. It's all perfect. So that's what you're that's what you're looking for right there. And I have the drywall cut out just enough to make that fit there. And then I'll just add more drywall uh, all the way down here, or some kind of something I can put down as backing for the drywall mud. But as you can see, it all turned out great. I mean, look at that reveal on that thing. Dead nuts lined up perfectly. And uh, so anyway, that's it. Keep going, brothers. You guys are doing great. Okay, so here's the finished supply, 
and I just took the existing and, and added on to it with Shark Bites or Tech Tights, either one. There's a couple name brands. And I brought it up to where it was originally. I just made sure it was inside of our uh, hole there so you can wouldn't get caught on the rim. I don't think I'll hold to show you that. Wouldn't get caught right here on this rim. I'll have it a little bit below that. Um, and then same thing on the bottom. You don't want to get caught on that uh, part, which is right there. It's an inch and a half lip. So I have it up about three inches, you know. And uh, you just want to have at least a minimum eight inch drop um, for that. Maximum 18 inch drop, but at minimum eight, eight inch drop for your tub spout. Anyway, that's it. And uh, that's the whole thing. Put a two by four, again. if it's a two by four wall, put a two by four flat, screw it to that, and that's perfect set. Okay, you could go back another half inch, but there's, you know, there's no wood that's one inch. So, uh, you know, using a two by four is fine. Six out of half inch was totally acceptable. It's within the realm. You'll see that when I finish it. So anyway, that's the whole thing. Looks great. I will call and continue with the next line. Okay, all under full pressure and no leaks. All the valves are perfect. Everything's out of sight. Just ran through the whole thing. You can see it all in the water here. Just ran through the whole thing. I'll go ahead and turn it on now just to show that it has water. And uh, so that's the thing. It's all set up. And there's literally no leaks anywhere. So you can zoom in on that if you need to. Okay, when you go to do your texture, you want to mask everything. I mean, literally mask everything because it takes a little while, well, it takes a lot longer to mask than to uh, spray. But the point is, if you don't mask, you'll be cleaning for hours. Okay, so do a good job masking and uh, it'll be a lot less work um, when the overspray gets everywhere. Okay, so you can follow the instructions I got here. Um, you see it's the same max off, so it'll look like it was built in originally when the house was built. It won't look like an add-on. It won't look like a... It won't look anything other than perfect. Okay? Okay, if you have any questions, put them down below. Mask everything. Mask, mask, mask. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cock out the uh, window there. And then we'll... Uh, Eventually we're going to clock out the whole thing, but I'm starting with the window there since I'm still painting. I got to paint around the perimeter. Uh, the owner's going to paint the rest, but I'll get my whole perimeter done so it'll all look perfect. And they can put in whatever color they want when they decide what color to paint their bathroom. Anyway, uh, you only want to use the uh, DAP 3.0 Kitchen Bath and Plumbing. It's the only stuff they want you to use. They recommend, you know, just this. Because it's the only stuff that will really stick to this acrylic. So, they don't want you to use 100% pure silicone, they want you to just use this. I believe this is 100% pure silicone, but they have it designed in such a way that it sticks to the stuff. Anyway, so go to town. This is the stuff they get. Yeah, I get that it's really hard to see because the light's on outside, you know. <laughs> it's daylight. So, you can't really tell a lot, but that's again how you can wrap this thing, a window in it. And uh, it worked out good. Okay, just got about a half inch reveal over the uh, bottoms here. It's right here, right there. You can see like a half inch reveal there. And let's see if I can see any more better picture for you, but it's hard to see. Anyway, it sticks out real nice. It just blends perfectly and uh, works out great. So anyway, it's hard to see, like I said, but you get the general gist. That's how you do a window. Okay, this is the way it's finished up now. Um, yeah, it looks really great. The owners want to uh, take some time to figure out what kind of paint they want to use, so I just made everything white so they could paint right over it, whatever color they want. It's a nice backdrop. But everything else is perfect. It looks absolutely gorgeous. 
Great job all the way through. If you have any questions, put them down below. I love these uh, Delta Classic 400s. It's just a really nice product.